Hey y'all, welcome back. All right, summer is in full swing here in central Arkansas. I don't know if you can hear the cicadas. They're singing today. Every year I do the same thing. I tell myself when I plant my tomatoes, I'm gonna take care of them this year. I'm gonna keep them trellised up. It's gonna be nice and neat, easy to get to. And every year I fail at it. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna try to get some of this tomato jungle behind me under control. Um, I'm going to prune out some of the more diseased areas and try to give them some airflow. There's lots of tomatoes on these plants. They're loaded and they look pretty good, but they do need to be gotten under control. So come along. Let's see what we can do. As I declutter my house, I'm getting these old t-shirts here and I'm just going to rip them up into strips and that's going to be what I use to tie the tomatoes to the fence panel that we put up. You can see that I've done this on a few of them and it's working pretty good. I wanted to use t-shirt because it's a little stretchy so it'll give them some leeway and it's not, I can cut it wider so that it doesn't cut off like the circulation to the stem of the plant. So I think this is gonna work pretty good. So this guy right here, he's pretty bad. So we're gonna start there. I got my pruning shears. I got my basket of t-shirt strips. Let's see if we can fix him. So when these things lay on the ground like this, this is why you don't want your tomatoes to have contact with the ground. They tend to get diseases and they'll turn yellow and get these spots on them. So what we wanna do is we wanna take those places out so that the, the plant is not stressed trying to fix itself. And while I'm down here, I'm gonna cut out a few of these weeds too. This is certainly easier if you start this process right after you plant them instead of waiting until they're huge and loaded with tomatoes like I've done. But like I said, every year I tell myself, I'm gonna take care of this and then I don't. So what we wanna do is we wanna give these things as much support as possible without tearing the limbs off. And we're gonna cut a few of these limbs off anyway, but I need them to help give me some support. So I'm just gonna kinda weave it through here And real farmers all over the place are probably losing their minds at how wrong I'm doing this, but we're going to do what works for us. And I'm just going to tie this up, and I'm just going to tie it in a bow so I can come back and change it up later if I want to. So now, now that we've kind of exposed all this, this is what was laying on the ground, and I want to get that off of there. I'm going to do my best to save the branches that have the tomatoes on them, but sometimes it does become necessary to go ahead and sacrifice some of those. These are San Marzano's, and it looks like it's got quite a yield on it. If I can nurse them through and get them to ripen. And we've also had so much rain that they, they've kind of stayed on the ground and damp for days and weeks at a time so the rain on the one hand is good because it waters them for us but on the other hand it tends to stress them out if you haven't taken care of them and gotten them up off the ground before it rains this little guy fell off but that's okay we'll slice them up and fry them with our supper tonight it does look like i have a little bit of blossom end rot going on and I'm gonna have to look up how to fix that I'm not sure I want to say it's a calcium deficiency but I'll need to do some research into that we're just gonna pick those off toss them over the fence for the squirrels and as with anything we don't want to prune too much of it off we don't want to kill the plant we just want to give it some good airflow and take those diseased parts off
determinate and determinate tomatoes. So they're going to keep growing and putting out new branches and making new tomatoes indefinitely. If they were determinate tomatoes, just as the name sounds, they would have a certain number of tomatoes they're going to make through a season and you would have to be a little more careful about what you trim off. These though, they're just going to keep growing and they've got suckers coming in and all the little armpits there and I'm not worried about over pruning and hurting my harvest. Okay, well that's a start. I got one more thing to talk to you about today and that is the use of pesticides. Ideally, you won't use pesticides in your garden. However, on tomatoes, if you start seeing this, where these branches look like they've been stripped, that means you have a tomato hornworm. You can look for these worms by using a black light on the plant. You might see them, you know, you can just look for them. However, in my experience, they're very hard to stop with non-pesticidal methods. The good thing about tomatoes is they don't really need pollinators to make fruit. So by following a few guidelines, you can minimize the risk to your pollinators and treat your tomatoes. What I use for tomato hornworms is seven dust. I do try to minimize the impact to the pollinators because it will kill your bees. All of your good stuff, it'll kill them too. Um, on the back, it has directions for use. Definitely read all of those. It also has a pre-harvest interval. If you put it on there, you have to wait a certain number of days depending on the crop before you harvest and eat those crops. Also on the back, with those instructions, it tells you how many times you can safely use it in a season. So I would highly recommend you read and follow those if you choose to use a product like this. Um, I use it in the evenings normally when the pollinators are kind of, they've kind of already gone to bed. So that minimizes it a little bit by in the morning the dew has caused it to be more stuck to the plant so that the pollinators can't just walk through and take it back to the hive. I have tried desperately to not use pesticides and in those years I generally use lose most if not all of my tomato harvest. I do try to use it as sparingly as possible. There are organic solutions out there. They've never worked for me. I think my uh, hornworms must be especially hardy. Um, but I just want to say it's okay to use this stuff if you have to. Don't forget to like and subscribe and as always Thanks for watching.